I think you could do Under Siege. You could remake Under Siege with, with Scott Adkins, for example. Ooh. I but mean, I you I, could, but would uh, it be any good? You know? um, <laughs> hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to talk about that proposed Under Siege reboot. Actually sounds like it's going to happen. There's an article on ScreenRant.com that I'm going to reference because they kind of pointed out a couple of potential actors and actresses that they thought could be good for that film. I'm going to dissect that. Make sure to stay until the end, by the way, because I had a recent conversation with legendary screenwriter, director Sheldon Ledich, and Under Siege Reboot came up in conversation, so you can listen to that segment. But um, there's going to be a lot of other cool videos I had with Sheldon coming out in the future based on the discussion we had, but we did talk a little bit about that Under Siege Reboot, so I'm going to include it at the end of this video. But anyway, make sure to help support the channel and make the 80s and 90s great again by hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing the video. Oh, say hi to the latest member of the family, by the way, Jean-Pierre. Look at him, he's very awesome, right? Maybe he, sh maybe he should be in the Under Siege reboot. It's better than some of the choices that that Screen Rant article talked about. <laughs> Steven Seagal's first four films, referred to as his golden era, established and cemented him as one of the greatest action stars in cinema. Make sure to check out my previous videos on this channel, Seagal's playlist, by the way, where I covered each one of those in depth in my early YouTube days. But it was Under Siege that truly made Seagull a mainstream star. Casey Ryback is such a badass character that there had to be a sequel, and there was, when he ventured into Dark Territory. Of course, the audience always wanted more, and we've been teased from time to time with discussion of an Under Siege 3. In fact, on October 5th, 2016, Seagull had tweeted, It's time. Woody Mister is starting the script for Under Siege 3. So I'm not sure who this Woody Mister is, but he's also listed as executive producer on another long-awaited Seagull sequel, Above the Law 2. So Seagull must think highly of this guy if he's attached to these sequels of what are arguably two of Seagull's best films. Now the focus of today's video is on the potential of an Under Siege reboot. Let me know in the comments section, by the way, if you'd prefer Under Siege 3 with Seagull or just a reboot with another actor taking over as the primary lead. The Under Siege reboot is supposedly in the works at Warner Brothers and HBO Max as it is being produced directly for the HBO Max streaming service. It's based on a pitch from writer Umer Aleem, whose credits include a recent Netflix film titled Kate. That one's about a female assassin who has 24 hours to get vengeance on her poisoner before she dies. Sounds a little bit like that film Crank starring Jason Statham. Now, I know what you're thinking. If this guy previously took Crank, the movie that is, and threw a woman in there in place of Jason Statham's role, will there be a woman potentially playing the lead in the Under Siege reboot? I'll discuss that a little further on. The other party involved in the pitch was director Timi Tejajanto, who has several films under his belt as director, most notably The Night Comes For Us, which I've heard great things about and starred Iko Uwais. Plot details are currently being kept under wraps, but it's a safe bet to say that something's going to be under siege in this uh, reboot film. As far as casting goes, ScreenRant.com recently put an article out titled The Perfect Action Stars for the Under Siege Reboot. I'll link that full article below if you want to read it, but let's dissect their choices. Here we go. All right, first up on the list, Keanu Reeves' article says, In addition to returning as Neo for The Matrix Resurrections, Reeves has really showcased his action hero chops in the John Wick movies, and the amount of training he's put in for the franchise's gunfu and martial arts battles is legendary. Reeves would also bring more of an everyman feel of Ryback, able to keep his deadly skills believably hidden. You know, that's actually a decent choice. Um, you know, it makes it a little more everyman like Willis did in Die Hard. So... Everybody likes Keanu Reeves. I could, um, I could, I could get on board with that. I'd be okay with that, actually. Uh, next choice, Charlize Theron. Article says, the name Casey Ryback is also rather gender neutral, so the lead of the Under Siege reboot could easily be gender swapped, and Charlize Theron would make a strong pick for a female version of Ryback. Now, she could actually pull off action. I actually liked her in the Mad Max Fury. Didn't really care for Atomic Blonde. But here's what the um, the author's missing. Like, I don't know if he's aware of the beef that she has with Steven Skull. I actually made a whole video about that that I'll link in the description below. So, just the idea of having Charlize Theron involved is the biggest slap in the face to Steven Seagal. I'll literally boycott this movie if that happens. Charlize Theron has basically criticized Seagal in his martial arts ability. 
uh, was actually pretty damn disrespectful. Now, she doesn't have to like Steven Skull as a person, but to come across as if she's better in some way to play an ass kicker in a movie with her fight choreography training compared to Steven Skull's real life martial arts ability and talent, he had a dojo in Japan, he had a dojo in the United States, he was a teacher, uh, very high dan in Aikido, he's skilled in other disciplines of martial arts, you know, kung fu, for example. So he's, he's obviously a highly accomplished martial artist. A lot of people give him crap, but the interesting thing is the people that actually respect him are really high up in the martial arts world, even fighters like Leota Machida, for example. So I would listen to them, and their opinion carries more weight than, um, you know, an average troll in the comment section on YouTube, for example. But basically, based on her real-life beef with Seagull and disrespectful comments directed towards him and his martial arts ability, replacing him an icon of the greatest era of martial arts and action films of all time, obviously the 80s and 90s, and rebooting his classic franchise with a woman who has gone on record to basically say she hates his guts, is basically like the final nail in the coffin of how they just destroyed this great action film genre, right? I mean, look at the damage they've done with Hard Target 2 or Welcome to Sudden Death. Hey, going back to Welcome to Sudden Death, what did you think about that movie? I didn't see it. Because yeah, I've heard yeah, so many I, bad I don't things. Recommend you do. I've, heard, <laughs> I've just heard so many bad things about it. So I, I guess I should try to watch it. One just of out of pure curiosity. Just out of curiosity. Just out of pure curiosity. And you will you will realize how I'm sure you're already aware about how great we had it in the eighties and nineties with like the original one. Right. It's like, right. wow, that's what they made back then. Mm -hmm. And then this is what they make now. Right. Right. <laughs> and this is why I made this channel basically. <laughs> right. And then to put a, uh, a woman like Charlize Theron to replace the goal in under siege, his most well-known film. That's actually absolutely abhorrent. <laughs> That is beyond disgusting, right? Anyway, next guy on the list, Joe Taslam. Article says, with director Timo Tejanto coming from the Indonesian film industry, it wouldn't be surprising if he elected to bring aboard some Indonesian stars he's worked with, and Joe Taslam would make a great pick. Taslam previously headlined Tejanto's underworld martial arts film, The Night Comes For Us, and the former judo champion is well known by action fans for his appearances in The Raid Redemption and Fast and the Furious 6. I actually really liked him in Fast and the Furious 6, and I actually think, you know, throwing that name out there, you know, that could work. That could work, actually. Um, probably a better choice than Keanu Reeves, actually. And, oh, of course, it should be mentioned he also played Sub-Zero more recently in the Mortal Kombat film, the, the remake of that, the reboot of that. Uh, next on the list, Julia Estelle. Going, the article says, going back to gender-swapping idea, Julia Estelle could also make a great female version of Kaisi Ryback for the reboot. Estelle is known for her portrayal of the villainous Hammer Girl in The Raid 2 and would later reteam with U Iko Uwais for Headshot, co-directed by Tejanto. I never heard of her, don't know anything about her. Don't be perfectly honest, I don't like the idea of a woman in the Under Siege reboot as a lead, and I'll tell you why. But the funny thing is, those are the four choices. They talk about people that that director has worked with. They even mentioned Iko Uwais as somebody that this latest Julia Stell has worked with. But why not throw Iko Uwais' name out there? Like, he's a star. Actually, you know, people often ask me, like, who's your favorite newer martial arts guy star? For me, I actually, I put him right up there because I think he's got that charisma and that star quality that I haven't really seen it with with some other well-known guys, some other well-known guys, but I think he's he's got that uh, so-called it factor where I think he could be like big and in, in mainstream and in, in bigger productions. And Under Siege, the reboot should be a bigger production. It shouldn't be like some low-budget crap like Hard Target 2 or Rock and the Sudden Death. Like it should actually, you know, be like a real Hollywood film, even if it's going to debut on HBO streaming. But you know, it's got to be a real film like that Mortal Kombat reboot was, basically. But anyway, uh, in general, you know, I don't think it's a good idea to have a female lead in the Under Siege reboot. They shouldn't take a well-known action film from the 80s and 90s that we associate with, I call the ultra-masculinity period. 
And Seagal was one of the greats. I mean, like a Mount Rushmore of action stars. He's one of the four guys on there along with Van Damme, Sloan, and Arnold. But to take an iconic film from that period and replace it with a woman is wrong on so many levels. Look, it's like when they were talking about that Roadhouse reboot years ago with Ronda Rousey. It's like, come on. Like, I, um, I got nothing against her, but I think a guy needs to be in that movie too, which uh, last I heard, they're throwing around the name Jake Gyllenhaal. So... I'll talk more about that in a future video, but before anyone calls me sexist, look, I have nothing against a female lead in an action film. Just do it the right way. Give us an authentic, badass female character like Ripley in Aliens or Sarah Connor in Terminator. Give us something original. Don't rehash a movie from the 80s and 90s where one of the icons of action slash martial arts cinema portrayed that character, and we associate that movie with that character and that actor and just replace it with a woman like it you want to put a woman in an action film like just give us something new give us something original and make it authentic don't make it seem forced and i will be a hundred percent on board with that and i'm sure a lot of you guys will too because it will actually make sense but anyway those are my thoughts uh let's hear what legendary writer director sheldon lenish has to say because under siege reboot did briefly come up in a conversation i had with them that wasn't the focus of the conversation we were actually talking about some Really cool stuff that you guys are going to see videos about in the future, but let's let's see what he says. Just uh, um, uh, you you believe Steven Seagal could kick somebody's ass? Totally, I believe he could yeah. save us from uh, in Under Siege from like the nuclear thing. Like I believe right. that, which is why I don't want them to reboot the movie because that's Seagal's movie, and we believe Seagal, especially at that time, that he could do that in real life, which kind of helps, right? Like they well, can't get a new guy doing that movie now. I don't think. Um. I think they could if they had the right. Guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Under yeah. ah, see, I wouldn't. They, nah, I don't. I don't like the idea because that'd be like, well, yeah. let's let's do uh, which they did. Like, like let's do another blood sport without Van Damme. It's like, no, that's Van Damme's movie. Uh, yeah, it'd be hard. It would really be hard to find somebody that could take Van Damme's place in uh, 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 blood sport. They but tried. Then of, they tried three of, times. But the, uh, there's the fighting aspects of Bloodsport too. And um, um, under siege, see, Bloodsport is very much dependent upon the lead actor being able to carry the film, mm -hmm. being able to make himself believable as the guy who wins the Kumite. Um, I don't think it would be that difficult. I, 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 th I think you could do under siege. You could remake under siege with, with Scott Adkins, for example. Ooh. I but mean, I you I, could, but would uh, it be any good? You know? um, it depends. It really depends on the director, I think, and the script, a lot of different things. See, I think uh, the character in that is too important. Casey Ryback, like, right. that, that's Seagull, basically. Mm -hmm. Which you can make the argument Seagull just plays Seagull in every movie, but it's like the character is one reason why we love it. So mm -hmm. that's why I don't think you could you know, put a Scott Atkins or even a Jason Statham, someone who does, you know, higher quality movies. Right, right. They're, they're probably going to make it regardless, but I, I, I want Steve, I'd rather have Under Siege 3 personally. Mm -hmm. 